And yet, when you have a real life, a 25-year-old actor versus a five-year-old boy or girl has to pay its rent, it's got family to have issues, it's got the, you know, the, uh, the cynicism of the world is attacked and all of those things. And you have a play to play or a character to play within. Then you're applying, then you're learning about group structure, the group that has to understand what you're doing and the, the group with whom you're working on, on telling a story, as in your life, and there's a, a group structure to, the, to, to what, the, the, what holds the stories that we tell as actors. But still, in, so there's got to be emerging, whether somebody starts acting at you know, two years old, or, or, or 50 years old, or 25 years old, or whatever it is. You know, everything that you lose in starting later, you gain in, in what you have to bring to it. And, you know, with the, the kind of immortality of youth comes the hubris of it. With um, a few extra years, you get a little more uh, humble of, of the fact, you know, what it is to live a life. I, I think I've always thought this, because I write also some, and I've always thought that, 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 that that's the closest two things that I've ever done, but, you know, to each other. Mm -hmm. I've said this before, but I, 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 I always thought that the idea that directors who were actors, being better directors for actors, is a kind of a myth in general. <clears throat> Unless they happen to just be good directors separate apart from the actors, which is not very much. And it'll be interesting tonight to do this. You'll see that my perspective on it <clears throat> is that everybody really ought to be speaking a different language. And so I would be very cautious in the, the way I talk to actors generally, speak, say firsthand, but about getting in the way of their dreams, because <clears throat> they're different dreams. And it's again, you know, in the process of that, you're, mer you're still merging now by two people in two different processes. There's so much of this is about merging things. Um, in the theater and in movies, most of what makes a good stage play or movie to me is the merging of everything. Is with the right actors, with the right parts, with the right music, with the right light, with the right at, at the right story at the right time, shot in the right place, or done in the you know in, a, in a city, the right city to be seen in the theater, and the timing of, and, and everything. It's all about this merging thing. So that goes between our, ourselves and our own child self as a pretender that's now affecting that pretense mm -hmm. uh, in adulthood. Um, but the thing I think that makes most actors want to act is that as soon as they start to do it, they feel it, and they feel it directly from that time when they first started pretending it. And when it was lighter hearted to pretend it. Mm -hmm. And it comes over you and you, you feel that kind of you know, emotional things and stuff that just connects with you. And so that that tends to drive most of the most actors to me. Mm -hmm. um, but I've always found that the, 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 the process of writing and the process of acting were very similar because it's a, it starts with a very private voice in your own head and heart. Mm -hmm. And that's the the, the irony, um, I've coined a phrase, I call it the Oprah moment, because, uh, have you heard it before? We're living in it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's that moment, which is I think the sweet spot in any play or film, when the character and the actor, if it's merged, are revealing something to themselves in public. Mostly we reveal something to ourselves in the middle of the night or when we're half awake in the morning and we have some kind of dream and then we, you know, that feeling you forget what it was in dreams but you zeroed yeah. in on something. And um, um, like the moment at the end of, of The Crossing Guard when he reaches out his hand, that's the what I call the Oprah moment where mm -hmm. someone's changed. They realize something and it's caused an evolution in their consciousness. Yeah, there's change and there's, but again, to me, more, to me what's more significant is is it's is it is it is the not not contradicting that, but is the is, is the is the counterpoint is 
the same. In other words, <clears throat> actors are good people and they're bad people. No good actor started as a bad person or a bad person. I'm not sure people do. <laughs> but what's, what's, what's coming to them is a very pure thing mm -hmm. that they remember. Mm -hmm. And it's it, what's emotional about it, whether it's whatever the, the emotion is, unsaid and for whatever the, the, the thing is, is being uh, reminded that they feel their own lives and, they, and, 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 and where, that, where that started. Mm -hmm. And during the dot-com boom, I had all these like rich, late 20, early 30, that said, oh, I want a new career, I want to be an actor. And I'm like, are you kidding? And they thought they could actually earn the same amount of money that they were earning acting. And I didn't know what to say to them. And I could look at them and I said, so you're not an actor. And, and, and then I thought, but they kept coming and I need to make a living. So I, I didn't want to turn them away. Generally speaking, the less an actor they are, the better living they make at it. Which is really <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> what I found from the last page of the only book Lee Strasberg wrote, which was called The Dream of Passion. And I know he's very controversial, but what can I say? He was my teacher. And and um, um, and when I was in class with him, we had a mix. We, we might have been just 20 people. It was hard to get in there. But if you were on the waiting list and you were a plumber, you could get in that class. Yeah. So there are some oddball people in New York in our class. And um, he said at the end of the book, which affected me, he said that, that our media is sucking the life out of people and that people need to restore themselves through these introspective acting gestures and exercises. That it's, they may not be actors, but in fact, he said that was the thing he was most proud of that he'd found something where non-actors mm -hmm. could begin to look at their inner life with some dignity. Instead mm -hmm. of see that happen, you know, because I'll, I'll work with a lot of non, uh, you know, formerly non-actors, but mm -hmm. I just worked with several on the movie I just did, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and people who never thought about it, they lived, the thing that we just did was everywhere but in, but near a major city, mm -hmm. and um, it, you know, people didn't, they didn't just like, you know, what the hell do I want to do that for? I got, you know, things to pull those. <laughs> and talk them into it. Uh -huh. And then bit by bit, you watch them on the set, and in the process of it, and in the scene of it, really finding something that, that lasts for them. Yeah. Well, what I, what I realized now, I've distilled that down, is that everybody wants to break through the fraud of maturity. Everybody wants to break through and feel that the moments of their lives are filled with with meaning. Meaning, magic, and yeah. Yeah, synchronicity, the whole thing, you know. And 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 the more that happens, the more synchronicity happens, the more bizarre things happen to to kind of indicate that something's going on. And this is what I feel I have to share is is is, is having a, a forum here where non-actors who feel called to acting can join in that conversation of their inner life. Generally, I, I mean, especially in movies, I think it's not, for me, the best approach to, to think things out. I'd rather not know them pick the book up before right. I do something. Yeah. In theater, a lot of times, again, speaking of the way I approach it, if just to learn lines, I'll start attaching behavior to things just because they kind of from here to here, it's this and this. But on the basis that it's it's like um, a great guitar player once said, I played an A chord for an hour and a half until I finally heard it. It might be worth, if, you know, if you say, gosh, right now this is a conscious visual thing, kind of contrived, but I want to pick this book up in this way or that way or whatever the thing. Maybe you just do it a thousand times in a row, just like you planned it. Pretty soon the original idea of it will get out of your head and into your body and you figure out just why you're doing that, or why you want to do it without knowing it, you know, but you, you, you've you accepted the choice that was in your head and turned it into your body and into the yeah. thing. That's another approach also. I love that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, great. I'm so glad we could just check in like this. Sure.